I'm Jeannie Caldwell, and welcome to In His Presence. Well, we're going to still be talking about how to have a happy marriage today, so I hope you've been watching the programs, because if you have, it'll give you wisdom and understanding on how to have a happy marriage. But before I go into the topic today, I want to sing a song that's, well, I haven't done it in a while, really, but it's called In His Presence Medley, and it's three songs we've put together, and I pray it'll bless you. In his presence, medley. Here in your presence, beholding your glory. Rest in your presence. In 
Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that your presence does fill this place. I thank you also that your presence was going out to those that are watching the program today, being ministered to and refreshed and blessed by your presence. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I'll be right back after this short break. All I could think to say was get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Her beautiful Holy voice Spirit, is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs He's are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer to The Anointing Every song makes you feel in His presence. Best Loved Hits, Hidden Classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom. CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Genie Caldwell are sold. Well, we've been talking for the last few weeks about how to have a happy marriage. I hope you've been listening, and I hope you've been applying some of the things that I've been teaching. If you do, you'll see a difference in your married life. Sometimes it takes a little longer in some marriages, but it does work. It works because it's the Word of God, and the Word of God is alive, and you can always operate the Word and know that His Word will not return to Him void. And so it will accomplish what He says it will accomplish in Jesus' name. Now, the first thing we talked about, and I want to mention it again, is in Genesis 2, 18 through 23, we find out that God made man in His image. Then He said man shouldn't be alone, and so He made the birds and the, uh, the animals and all these creatures, and He ran them to buy ran them by Adam to see what he would call them. And Adam actually named those animals. I mean, he was a brilliant man. He named all those animals and the birds and everything. But not one of those uh, creatures were fit for Adam. So God made man a woe man. And he took a rib from his side and skillfully handcrafted the woman. And so I like to say men, you know, were made from the dirt. That's why they like to play in dirt. They love to garden. They like to play football. They like to do all these things where they get dirty. <laughs> so I don't know if that's necessarily true. But anyway, they were, uh, they, got, they were made from the dirt. A woman was skillfully handcrafted by the Word of God and by the hands of God. Now, we were made, the woman was made as a gift to man to be positioned by God to be beside him to minister to him spiritually, physically, and mentally. I guess you could say that the women were the first ministry of helps <laughs> to the husbands because that's what, we, that's what we were and that's what we are. 
we are a help meet. It speaks of a help meet for, for Adam. And to help is to aid or give assistance, suitable, qualified, adaptable. You know, a woman can adapt to just about anything. She really can. She can cope. They're made, we're made to cope. We really are. We'll go with our husbands all over the world if we love them and if they love us. A woman will do that. She'll stand by her man. She really will. And then meet is to surround and protect our husbands. And like I said, that nobody can surround or protect or complete your husband like a wife can. She can do that. Why? Because God has made her to do that. She is a helpmeet that's fit for him, suitable for him. And I believe that a, a husband will listen to his wife or he wouldn't listen to anyone else. If she has wisdom and if she speaks to him in love and doesn't try to tell him what to do, you know, but we'll just give her opinion or you talk about things, you communicate about things. And we'll talk about that today. We mentioned that there is a divine order in the home, God the Father, then Jesus Christ is the head of the husband and the wife. The husband's the head of the wife. The wife is submitted to the husband. Children are obedient to their parents, but they all go through Jesus to the Father. We need to know that. We also said that you must be willing to change your ways and your old habits. You must be, and the only way you can do that is by getting into the Word of God and let the Word of God renew your mind. Renew it from the old ways to the new ways. And then second, you must have fellowship with God. You must read His Word. You need to fellowship with Him because worshiping Him and fellowshipping Him will be strength to you, will help you do what you need to do. As you also, as you fellowship and worship God, it will, it will strengthen you to, uh, to get closer to God. You'll get closer to God and then you'll be a better mother and wife or a better father and a husband. I think it's interesting though to note that we have to be trained to love our husband and to love our children. And you might think, well, I don't need to be trained to love my husband. I love him. But do you love him? Sometimes uh, we love them because we're attracted to them. But you have to be trained according to the word uh, to, to love him, to be suitable and adaptable to him. Now let me let me show you something here. Go to Titus 2, 4 through 5. Titus 2, 4 through 5. This says that the aged men, the older men, be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity or love and in patience, and the aged women, older women likewise, that they be in behavior as becoming holiness not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Now, have you ever thought about that? The older women are to teach the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sober, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. I think that is so interesting because so many people say, well, I love my husband, but do you love them? Do you really love them according to the way God wants you to love them, the way God wants you, the kind of marriage he wants you to have? So you can be an example to people. People watch you and they watch your marriage. They really do. You may not think they do, but they do. They observe. They observe your marriage. So we also uh, ha not only have to realize that, to be trained to love our husbands and to love our children, and not to love them in the solical way, in the physical way, but in the spiritual way also. It shouldn't be based on the five physical senses. It should also be based on that spirit of God that's in you, that, through that recreated spirit. And you don't ever take one another for granted. So many times when you've been married for a while, you know, you work real hard in those first, you know, few months to just be everything, or first few years maybe, to be everything your partner wants you to be. You look good, you smell good, you do all these things. The women try to look pretty and the men try to look handsome, try to, you know, just be everything that your partner wants. But then all of a sudden it's like, 
well, why do we need to go to this much work? <laughs> you know, why do we have to go to so much effort? We don't have to do all this, do we? Do we really have to? Well, yeah, we do. You have to be conscientious about those things because if you don't, you will begin to take one another for granted. And you should never do that. You should never take your partner for granted. You can't just assume that everything will work out okay. And that's where communication comes in. I mentioned that earlier. You have to learn to communicate. You have to let your partner know how you feel. You have to let your partner know if you've been hurt or if you've gotten angry about something. You've got to let them know that. And you know, you don't hold it in, you don't hold the anger in, you don't pout, you don't sulk, because that's controlled anger, that can bring depression. But you'll not understand one another if you don't communicate. Because one thing that I learned from hearing these tapes and studying all about marriage and so I can help others, is that men and women do not think alike. That was a revelation to me because women think they ought to think like me. They will never think like you. You've heard Dr. Dobson teach on right brain, left brain. It's some of the most interesting things that you'll ever listen to or ever hear or read. Dr. Gary Smalley has some books also on marriage and they talk about right brain, left brain, you know, and it is the truth. You know, men can put their hunting gear on and they can go hunting and they'll go out there and they'll shoot that deer, you know, and bring that, throw that deer over their shoulder and come home so proud of what they've done. And what's the wife doing? You shot Bambi. I mean, you know, <laughs> she's, she's just into her emotions. He's into logic. He thinks, what's the matter with you? You know, I know I saw a book one time on a shelf in a home and it's everything that I have learned about women. I thought, that sounds interesting. I opened it up and it was blank. There was not one thing on one page. I thought, interesting, a man wrote it, <laughs> you know. You, men say, I don't understand my wife. You probably won't unless you learn to communicate and talk about these things. I think it's funny. I just really think it's funny. You know, a wife will say, let's go shopping. She wants to go shopping. Well, the husband hears that and he thinks, well, she wants to, because she'll say, I need to buy me a blouse. With his mind, blouse, hunt. We're going to find that blouse. They go to the shopping center. He's looking for the, the blouse rack. And she stops by the shoes. Oh, look at all these pretty shoes. And he says, I thought you were looking for a blouse. Yeah, but look at all these pretty sh shoes. He's frustrated. She's not, she's shopping. He is shopping for a blouse. And so they just do not connect where those things are concerned. Very few men can go shopping with their wife. Now there are some that can. Oh, there are jewels too. <laughs> you know, wives say, ah, he'll go with me. You know, not many. I never take my husband shopping with me. Never. I, I rarely, I, the only time we go shopping together is when he's going to buy some clothes and I help him buy his clothes. Other than that, forget it. Go shopping by yourself. And I think, I mean, he's not ugly about it, but that's, he, men just don't understand that sort of thing. And so, but when you understand that, you can relate to one another. You can communicate with one another. Because understand, women, that men will never think like you. And men, you remember that a woman will never think like you. You have to discuss these things and talk about these things to understand one another. I think it's, I think it's interesting. You know, I've learned a lot in, in my old age, in my aged age, you know. I'm, I'm learning a lot and still learning. That's why I say you never learn everything. There's always something new that comes your way and will help you. That helped me tremendously. So communication, you have to realize that problems arise from misunderstanding, sometimes more than selfishness. It's not really selfishness a lot of times. It's just not understanding one another. And it's also interesting to note that women speak 25,000 words a day, give or take a few. A man speaks 10,000 words a day, give or take a few. It sounds like she needs somebody to talk to. <laughs> and, and the husband, you know, 
he'll come in from work maybe and maybe she's been home all day by herself and she hadn't had anybody to talk to and he walks in the door and she's getting all those 25,000 words in before supper, you know. <laughs> and he's tired, he wants to get those clothes off and rest a little bit. Well, understand that. But then husbands, you also understand that she does need to talk and she needs someone to talk to. Now, if she's working, you know, there's times you can talk, you can go out to lunch with the girls and talk, and it's so funny. That's why women belong to garden clubs, women go to Bible studies, women do these things together. Why do they do that? Because they like to talk and they like to get together and do things together. Now, a hundred years ago, women used to quilt. That's for TV, that's for any of those things. They would all gather together in a big circle and have a big quilt there and they would quilt and talk all day. All of them getting their 25,000 words in. <laughs> but you gotta learn conversational skills. I mean, you listen as well as talk. You don't talk all the time, but you listen and you talk. That's conversational skills. And you don't interrupt, you know, you, you learn to listen. And they talked it all out. And if they weren't quilting, they were canning, or they were making jellies or preserves or, or something like that. But they did things together. So that when the husbands came out of the field from working hard, they had supper ready and they had a wonderful meal together and she had got her words out. She had talked all these things that she needs to talk, talk about. So that's just, you have to learn that though. You have to understand that and be considerate one to another and one another. So learn to talk, but also learn to listen and don't interrupt him when he's talking, but then also you don't interrupt her when she's talking. Learn to communicate. You learn to not talk about finances when you just want to talk. Boy, that can cause friction. You also don't talk about past mistakes. And don't say, do you always do that? Do you always have to do that? No, you learn not to talk about past mistakes. You give one another your undivided attention but always remembering that you think differently. Sometimes you've got to explain why you said that and what you were thinking when you said it for him to even understand where you're coming from. And it's the same way with men. It's the same way. And, and this, is the, this is the truth that you need to grab hold of and always remember. Then we talked about a, a wounded ego. Um, a man that has a wounded ego has a hard time talking. He really does. And you need to remember also that his ego is not pride. It's the way God made him to be the leader, provider, and protector of the home. And he's to be admired, appreciated, accepted. You need to compliment him, show affection to him. You know, I remember reading a long time ago, when I first, the first, very first book that I ever read on these things I'm teaching you in the 70s, uh, I remember it was the first book I'd ever read, you know, and I read about submission and threw it across the room. I said, well, what about me? It looks like I'm doing all the giving. He's not doing anything. But, you know, I repented and picked it back up and read some more things. And they were talking in there about how you need to show appreciation towards your mate. This was talking to women where their husbands were concerned. And there was this one marriage, and she went to this counselor, and she said, I'm telling you, my husband, we don't get along at all. He comes in filthy and greasy and dirty. He was an auto mechanic. He leaves all of his filthy clothes in the dining room. He hangs stuff over the chairs. He puts all these parts, really, that he's working on in the house. She said, I have fussed. I have done everything I know to do, and he will not take one thing out, hang one thing up. He's just belligerent, and she was just mouthing. They'd been married for years, I guess. Well, they had been married for years. And the counselor said, because she was wanting a divorce, the counselor said, have you ever, because she had nothing good to say about him, she said, have you ever picked out his good points? And she said, I don't know of any good points. <laughs> she said, is there one thing that you can admire? Is there one thing that you can say good about him. She said, well, he always has been a good provider. She said, well, I want you to try something. I'm going to give you some homework. When he comes home, instead of mouthing about he's hanging his clothes where he shouldn't or not hanging his clothes, you know, and throwing them on the floor, she said, when you're at the dinner table, just tell him 
how much you appreciate him for being a good provider. She said, well, let me think about it. I don't know if I can do that or not. But she thought about it. He came in that night, threw his clothes around, had all these greasy stuff all over the floor. While they were sitting at the table, she said, uh, whatever his name was, Bill, she said, I want you to know that I appreciate you being such a good provider all of our married life. Our children are grown, they're in college, and I've never had to work, and you've always been there for us, and I just want to say thank you. Well, he almost fainted. He said, well, well, thank you. The very next day, he began to show a difference in, what, in his attitude and the things that he would bring in. He started leaving out these greasy pieces of equipment and stuff. Slowly but surely, as she spoke kind words to him, he began to line up and do everything that she had asked him to do in the beginning. It was just the way that she was telling him to do things that felt like a mother instead of a wife. So there are things that you learn along the way. Speak well to your husbands. Speak well to your wives. Understand one another. Take the time to understand one another. And I'm telling you, you'll find out that you can have a wonderful marriage. You can have a happy marriage. And there's a lot more we'll talk about. We won't have time to get into it today. Thank you for joining us today for In His Presence. You can write Jeannie Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email her at Jeannie Caldwell at VTNTV.com. To order a DVD of today's program, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. Join us next time as we meet in His Presence.